Greetings and thank you for having us. So today we're going to be talking about freedom through privacy and how it shaped all the facets of our project called Dero. Um, firstly, I'd like to introduce Dank, Cryptoid and myself, Joshi. Uh, we are the founders of the Dero Foundation and we are the more public facing members of the project team. Uh, together what we're going to do is we're going to cover many topics and we'd like to have some time at the end for any questions. Um, so if there's no objections, we'd like to dive right in. So firstly, we're going to have a look at the Dero mission statement. Uh, so Dero is a general purpose, private and scalable decentralized application platform that allows developers to deploy powerful and unstoppable applications while users retain total control over their assets with complete privacy. It is our goal to create a sound monetary framework that will globally safeguard the privacy of all its users and empower free markets to thrive whilst maintaining complete audit auditability. So the Dero Foundation will support that mission statement uh, by integrating decentralized privacy systems and standards within the digital ecosystem to help shape a mo more open society by providing support for advancement of the Dero platform, uh, which in turn will allow us for the creation and deployment of private decentralized applications, payment systems and tools. Uh, we also aim to support this with concise documentation and education along the way. Uh, one of the key visions for the Dero developers as well is to have at least one full node or whether that be a prune node in any home running on something small and cheap like a router. Um, this is one of the, been the key things from the very start that the, the development team have, have pushed. So what we'll do now is we'll give you a brief history of Dero, um, just to let you know where we've got to at this point today. So the project started in December 2017 with three full-time developers. Um, the three developers have got over a decade of experience in cryptography and blockchain development, uh, so they're well experienced in that area. The project started out its life as a CryptoNote fork, uh, but by March 2018, there was a complete rewrite of the CryptoNote protocol in Golang. And the development team chose Golang due to its high degree of immunity to security vulnerabilities. By April 2018, uh, there was quite a lot of ongoing attacks on CryptoNote base coins. Uh, the Dero network managed to migrate the, uh, the Golang code base without any downtime. Um, the core devs spent a lot of time studying how the attacks were implemented. Um, they designed a new type of blockchain that's resistant to 51% hash rate attacks and soft forks. In June 2018, uh, the core devs unveiled a new blockchain technology which was codenamed Atlantis. Uh, Atlantis combined the CryptoNote protocol with Dero DAG and Rocket Bulletproofs. Uh, which Dank and Gryptoid will uh, touch more on later on in the presentation. By January 2019, we saw the first smart contract testnet release called Stargate using the Dero virtual machine and with smart contracts written in DVM Basic. Uh, the devs chose this language due to its ease of use so that anyone who wants to build and deploy on Dero can do. In February 2020, the devs searched for a fairly distributed mining algorithm that was able to reduce the performance of ASICs and other specialized hardware. Um, this is where the devs delivered Astro BWT. Uh, we did a hard fork to mainnet in March, and after managing huge amounts of hashing power and soft forks, the Dero block DAG resumed normal operations, and we now mining with CPU miners from around the world. Moving on to December 2010, the Dero devs delivered Dero homomorphic encryption on testnet. Uh, it led up with many months of research and development and rigorous testing. Um, those who are familiar with homomorphic encryption uh, will appreciate there's an issue with speed. Um, for many teams out there who have been looking to implement it, have had this issue, um, especially within the blockchain. And all this has led up to our latest testnet, which was the release of private smart contracts and services, um, all with Dero homomorphic encryption at its core. And along with this release of the testnet uh, came instant account balances where it's no longer required to sync the whole chain to see your balance. So that's just a brief overview of the Dero history uh, so far. So what I'm going to do now is pass you over to Cryptoid who will uh, go through some of the Dero features that's on offer. Okay, so moving on to the new protocol, um, Stargate RC2, we have some features we want to go over. Um, we'll go into some of these a little bit more in depth uh, later, uh, but for now we'll we'll get through the list of features and and explain more as uh, as it goes on. Um, first off is a fifty one percent attack resistance. Um, 
So the block DAG will actually rejoin chain splits and has been shown to be extremely resilient to uh, hash rate attacks. Um, during the Astro BWT fork, we actually had a large amount of unexpected hash rate at a very low difficulty, and the chain was temporarily split into multiple chains. But um, after some time, it completed settling back into one cohesive chain in a few minutes and uh, with no with no intervention. So um, it's shown to be pretty resilient as far as uh, pure hash rate attacks go. Uh, also, uh, DHEBP, um, it only allows for one outgoing transaction per account per block. Um, multiple recipients can actually be assigned in a single transaction, but with only one outgoing transaction per account, um, that eliminates the issue of double spending. Next up, we have block time. Uh, Dero has a fast block time of about 25 seconds, which allows for a high amount of transactions per second. Um, it also allows for quick transaction settlement. Uh, the latest release can handle about 750 TPS on the 20 megabit network as well. Uh, also, um, instant transaction settlement with the, with the block time means that all accounts are settled as the blockchain settles, so there's no waiting for change to unlock. Um, as your transaction completes the same block, it is confirmed. Next is the instant balance and, and wallet syncing. So when using an account-based model, there's no need to sync the entire blockchain and balances can actually be retrieved from the most recent block. So you don't have to sync your wallet anymore. You just request your account balance and you're done. Also another feature that we're utilizing is blockchain pruning. So the blockchain pruning is utilizing Merkle proofs and Graviton DB. Um, this allows nodes to verify previous information states without the need to store the entire blockchain. Um, this means that light nodes can actually keep a smaller prune version of the blockchain while still keeping the integrity of the data. Also, it's important to remember that the entire blockchain is actually encrypted and all blockchain operations utilize homomorphic encryption to maintain privacy. Which brings us to perfectly anonymous transactions. Utilizing many of many proofs and homomorphic encryption, on-chain analysis is basically stopped before it can begin. Uh, layer 1 transaction privacy, peer-to-peer uh, -peer network encryption, and encrypted balances, uh, cre they basically create a, a vacuum for metadata, which effectively stops on-chain analysis in its tracks. And last but certainly not least, uh, we have highly efficient mining with uh, Astro BWT. Uh, Astro BWT is actually shown so far to perform very well on modern ARM CPU architecture. Um, even versus GPUs when measuring hash to watt ratios, ARM CPUs seem to be performing very well. Um, miners have actually been successfully using mobile devices to mine um, at some Actually, pretty surprising hash rates, especially when you consider the relative low power requirements of those devices. So that's something that is actually pretty exciting as far as mining goes. Um, when, you, when you can have an ARM CPU using so, so much less power than a, than a GPU and still, uh, still putting out some pretty effective hash rate. So, Thanks, Cryptoid. So as you can see, the Dero has some pretty impressive features on its list. Um, but what we're going to do now is pass you over to Dank, who's going to discuss further on the core of Dero. Um, so over to you, Dank. All right, I'm going to jump in and talk about the core functionality of the Dero platform. So there's going to be a lot of information coming your way, but um, you know we have a completely new code base, and there's going to be a lot of ideas and concepts to cover. Uh, so I'll try to make everything as concise as I can, um, and hopefully it'll be easy to understand. First, I'm going to talk about the Darrow homomorphic encryption blockchain protocol, uh, what we uh, call Darrow HE. Uh, basically, um, any sort of operations, uh, whether through the wallet and through a node, is going to be running on this protocol. If you're new to Darrow, um, you'll probably find, and we'll discuss this more in more detail later, uh, that 
almost everything is uh, transaction based. So we have the general transactions through each wallet. And then we also have uh, smart contract functionality that is also transaction based. So um, as a layer one solution, everything is running through the same layer and on the same protocol. Uh, I did want to start off uh, just with a little bit of information about uh, homomorphic encryption. It is essentially a form of encryption allowing one to perform calculations on encrypted data without decrypting it first. Uh, so basically the result of the computation is uh, as if it was decrypted first. Uh, so the outputs are the same. Next up is our account model. Uh, we had previously in our Atlantis release operated using an unspent transaction output model uh, that mimics uh, Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies. In that model, you are tracking the sum of inputs and making sure that the sum of outputs are less. We have instead moved to an account-based model with our Stargate RC2 release, um, which mimics uh, more of a traditional accounting system with debits and credits. Uh, in this case, though, uh, the two numbers are added or subtracted from one another. Uh, this greatly simplifies the homomorphic operations and uh, also paves the way for the instant balances and wallet syncing that uh, we heard about previously uh, with the help of Graviton, uh, which is an open source authenticated key value store database that was developed specifically for uh, our new homomorphic encryption protocol. So Darrow HE combines uh, many out of many proofs, bullet proofs, and the Sigma protocol. Um, so what it basically boils down to is the size of each transaction is primarily determined by the level of privacy. So in other words, uh, each time the anonymity set doubles, um, which is increasing the desired level of privacy, uh, the size of the transaction proof increases by a fixed amount. So, you know, altogether, this creates an efficient construction of anonymity sets or rings, and uh, they grow logarithmically in size. Um, so the end result would be compact and verifiable payments uh, for low resource devices. And this is actually where you can see some efficiencies in uh, power management and resource utilization uh, by allowing, you know, mobile devices and you know, devices such as Raspberry Pis that can actually operate a full node. Ultimately though, this is all combined to achieve anonymity and deniability in the core protocol. So the next thing I'm going to touch on uh, are smart contracts on our platform. So we utilize a new uh, language called DVM Basic, and it's a contract-oriented uh, language uh, for implementing smart contracts. Uh, it was influenced by a few other uh, languages, but essentially the key here is to make smart contracts easily programmable and readable, as well as uh, very easy to publicly audit. Our latest release uh, supports both public and private smart contracts, so we'll kind of go over the slight differences between the two. Um, Public contracts uh, reveal the token and asset balances on the blockchain, which uh, can also be viewed by anyone in the block explorer. Whereas private contracts, they hide the token and asset balances and can only actually be seen by individual wallets. So uh, think of uh, tokens like cash. So once they're withdrawn from the bank, uh, no one knows how it will be spent or who owns them until they are deposited back into the smart contract. So once uh, assets are issued to the wallet, uh, they can only really be controlled by the owner of that wallet. Uh, so this is meant to prevent interference uh, from any third parties, for example, the smart contract itself, since the smart contract will not have any control over the funds once they're issued. In either case, though, um, whether it's public or private smart contracts, the smart contract code will always be public and available uh, for anyone to view um, on the Block Explorer. Uh, that way you can verify which code is running at the time and also can be audited at any time.
Next, I'd like to talk about um, services on uh, Dara. Uh, so we've added a new feature um, to transactions and we call it services. Uh, so essentially what you can do is you can send transactions um, with an additional 128 bytes of data. Uh, which can include, you know, like a URL or license keys or even a message. Um, but any wallet host um, can reply to transactions. And uh, basically what it's enabling are completely private services for, you know, specific applications or maybe types of clients or even goals. So it's essentially a transaction, but aside from the sender and the receiver of the transaction, no one can decrypt those messages. The services functionality within Stargate now uh, provided some interesting use cases uh, from our community developers. Uh, we had a development competition uh, called Dark. Uh, actually, it's called Decentralized Architecture Competition Series. And uh, we found some pretty creative hybrid type of uh, services and smart contracts. We saw a decentralized email system. We saw a decentralized uh, VPN and, of course, swaps and some DeFi and NFT types of applications as well. Thanks, Dank. So now you've had a, an overview of the Darrow core, I think it's a good opportunity to take a deeper look into Astro BWT. So I want to hand you over to Cryptoid, who's going to go into detail on that for you. So BWT in general has been an issue in computer science for, for decades. Um, and basically creating a successful FPGA or ASIC for BWT would actually be a great thing uh, for scientific research and, and society in general. So um, it's actually encouraged that somebody can, can optimize this algorithm for an ASIC or an FPGA uh, because science has been trying to do it for decades. Um, as far as efficiency goes, um, while, while GPUs can be slightly more efficient than x64 CPUs, um, really their edge is not enough to make CPU mining obsolete. Um, actually newer ARM CPUs, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, tend to have a higher hash to watt ratio and actually give anyone the ability to mine from lower powered devices, um, cell phones, other mobile devices, etc. Um, some examples of these, um, so an NVIDIA 3090 GPU, it can get 6.7 kilohash, uh, but, it, but it uses 360 watts. So right there you're looking at 18.6 hashes per watt. Um, you move on to an X64 CPU, like a Ryzen 9 3900X, you're getting about 2 kilohash. Um, and you're using about 105 watts, so that, that's 19 hashes per watt. It's pretty comparable to the GPU. Uh, moving on to something like the, the new Apple M1 ARM, for example, uh, you get about 783 hashes a second. Um, that uses about 20 watts, though, so now you're at 39 uh, hashes per watt. And mobile devices like uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 860, that can pull about 280 hashes a second uh, and using only 6 watts, so at that point you're at like 47 hashes per watt. So as you can see, the, the pure hash to watt efficiency, um, ARM CPUs and that architecture seems to really be what performs the best with Astro BWT. And just kind of speculatively, um, there seems to be a lot of desktops that are even moving to ARM architectures at this point. So um, in the future, it's very possible that that more and more ARM architecture is in the hands of everyday consumers um, outside of mobile devices. So that, that looks good for, for future decentralization as well. Also, uh, just want to touch on a few more things here. Um, the TLS encrypted P2P network um, is also a very unique feature to Dero. Uh, there, there's no central authority for the for the TLS certificates. They're all self-signed certificates by the nodes themselves. 
Um, this prevents network packet sniffing. Um, it also reduces the amount of metadata available to attackers in general, so smaller attack surface is always better. And also the, the newest release has, uh, has reduced the bandwidth requirements to about a sixth of the previous release. So this is good for emerging markets and areas that might not have access to high bandwidth. Another quick point uh, I want to touch on here is uh, the, the change to the total supply and emission. Um, so currently with the Atlantis release, which is based on CryptoNote, there is the standard 18.4 million uh, supply plus an infinite tail emission. Um, this is going to be changing to uh, 20.4 million, but it's going to be a hard cap supply. Also, the emission is going to be changing from a steadily adjusting curve to a halving, uh, more like Bitcoin with the block rewards. Um, the emission rate will remain as close to the current schedule as possible, um, so there really won't be any difference in the circulating supply or how fast that is reached. But once the 20.4 million cap is reached, emission will stop. Thanks, Crypto, for that explanation. So what's next for Darrow then? So one thing we all know is that quantum computers with enough processing power is enough to unravel most of the cryptography used on the modern internet. And um, we also, over the next 10 years, quantum computers have become, become more widely available. Um, so the majority, or if not all, crypto projects need to focus on quantum proofing, uh, which is why Darrow has officially added it as a roadmap item. It is going to be uh, a good area of focus and research and development for the foundation of the development team. Um, so yeah, it's something we're happy to, to, to introduce to our roadmap. Alongside that also, uh, education has always been on our list. Um, we know we've still got a lot of work to do with the documentation to help and support people build on top of Dero. Um, it's been very challenging to get it all completed at the stage to where we want it. Um, that's mainly due to the, the great advancements in the tech that the devs have delivered. Um, along with education, we also want to continue our outreach work with universities and developers um, and look to the possibility of the Dero Foundation supporting uh, other developers with, with grants in the future. So um, that's something to, to watch this space on. Also, to coincide with the mainnet release, we'll have a new Dart competition, uh, which comes with a Dero reward um, that's going to launch with mainnet. And if you want to have a look into that, um, you can see some previous Dart competitions that we ran on testnet. Um, but this is an open invitation to, to those who love to build, or if it's, if it's your first time, uh, please come along and, and give it a go and, and let us know what you think. So that wraps up our presentation for today. Uh, we do appreciate there's a lot of information to take on board. Um, so if you guys want to uh, join any of our social channels, if you scan the QR code on the screen at the moment, that'll give you a link to, to all of the social channels and feel free to reach out to, to any of us, uh, ask any questions you may have. Um, and chat with our, our community. They've got an awesome community over here. So um, please do obviously come and say hello um, and, and join. But we thank you again for the invite and appreciate your time. And we look forward to any questions that come after this. Thank you.